It's about 1 hour and 15 minutes until the S&P 500 opens up. So today I thought we can use the ChatGPT code interpreter to try to predict the opening price of the S&P 500. To do this we're gonna feed it data I could find that was recommended by GPT-4. And I'm gonna show you how I did this step by step. And then we're just gonna sit and wait till the stock markets open up and see how close we came. The first thing we need of course is data to make the ChatGPT code interpreter work. So we just started collecting. So I found this on Kaggle.com, the S&P 500 stocks daily updated. So I found, I think it was 10 years of uh, S&P opening prices. So I downloaded that, so we had that. I also wanted some latest financial news, uh, so we can do a sentiment analysis on that. So I just went here to Yahoo Finance, latest news, and I copy a lot of headlines from here, and I went over to the playground, and I just fed in all this data here I could find on Yahoo News. Then I just wrote, create a well-structured sentiment analysis report with positive, negative, and neutral for the S&P 500 index open price. And then we got this sentiment analysis for uh, S&P 500. So we have some positives, we have some negatives and neutral. So I went ahead, saved that to a text file. So we have that. And then I actually went over to ChatGPT because I wasn't quite sure what kind of data we needed. And I just asked for um, what data should I collect to predict the open price for a given day. And we got uh, futures data. So the e-mini S&P 500. Went over to Yahoo again, so I collected this um, price here. So this is the future for today. Also, we wanted some um, exchange rates. So US dollar to Euro, pounds and yen, I think. Uh, also went back here to Yahoo News and I found those data sets here. And I put all those into here so you can see here we have the mini. Uh, it wanted the volatili volatility index, the WIX, I collected that. And the FTSE, that is the, um, the London Stock Ch Exchange. So I just put in that, the 10 year treasury, treasury yield. And what other data? Yeah, the Chinese stock market. And that was basically all I collected. You can see ChatGPT also wanted uh, sentiment analysis, uh, but I already had that. And the performance of the Asian and stock markets were kind of already... We have some data on it from the stock exchange and we have some data in the news report. You can see we have the WIX here, we have the bond yields. And then I had basically all the data I wanted for this. And I'm going to show you a trick like uh, on uh, the code interpreter, uh, you can only upload one file at a time, right? But if you go to WinZip or some other zip, uh, you can just upload all these files into one, right? So here I put the S&P index with the, all the um, historical prices. I put the sentiment, uh, sentiment analysis and I put the other finance data. That's the Wix and the exchange rates and stuff. And I just save this as one zip file. So when we head over to the code interpreter now, we can just upload one file instead of using up all our attempts in uploading many different files, right? So let's head over to the code interpreter and try to predict the price. Okay, so now we are ready to try to predict the price. So I just went ahead, created this kind of standard system prompt, ignore all previous instructions. You are an expert data scientist, finance, stock market, market expert. Your task is to analyze new sentiment report, look at the historical SP500 data and other relevant data to predict the opening price for the S&P 500 on the July 10th of 2023. You will provide with historical index prices, today's update news and other relevant data. Let's think about it in a step-by-step -step way and predict the opening price, right? We want to add our file. So remember, we have this zip file here now. So we just call it SP500 prediction. And we're gonna upload that. And that file is gonna include all our, all our files, right? Let's just click submit and see how this works. Okay, so I just wanted to show you this. So see, let's begin with the, the first step, unzipping the file. And here you can see the uploaded zip file contains the following file. So we get all three files in one file, right? Uh, I think that's just a nice, nice thing to do to save you some attempts here. Instead of uploading all three files, you save. You can just do it in one batch, right? Okay, so after a long way back and forward, we ended up with approximately 4416. That is our prediction for the opening price. So I have taken a note of this here. Five, six minutes until the S&P 500 opens. So we got some cool graphs here. We got a correlation matrix of other financial data. I think it's something is missing here. Just wanted to show you these visualizations. 
here's opening prices over time. So you can see pandemic here, right? And was there something else? Uh, distribution of SPNT 500 opening, so you can see like, uh, yeah, this is 10 years of data, so I don't know what uh, how this helps, but it's, it was a really long way to get down here. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so that is our number. Now we are gonna head over to Yahoo and watch live when the S&P 500 opens. Okay, so are we live now? I'm not quite sure. So. 4416 so let's refresh that okay i guess we are live 4396 so we kind of missed by a lot right let's see if we can hit this number let's give it a couple of minutes but we were quite off we were off by 18 points was it okay so it's been about five minutes now since the market has calmed down uh we were kind of off uh, 11 12 points off that's quite much i guess the only positive thing was that we the future, the mini was 4431 uh, when we put this data in, so at least we went below that. Uh, but the point of this was not to hit the target, right? Uh, I don't think any model can do that. Uh, the point was just to show, like, uh, you can collect data, how you can do this. Um, we use Kaggle, right, to find the daily the database for the prices. We used uh, Yahoo Finance. Basically, this was just practice to collecting data. Uh, I think this is going to be important going forward. And when it comes to using code interpreter, you need data, right? So hopefully this gave you some anyway, uh, even though we kind of missed on our opening price. I can see it moving upward, but uh, I don't think we're going to reach uh, our goal. But I'm going to gonna follow along just a bit. Uh, but anyway, that was all I had for today's code interpreter video. Uh, I'm going to be making some more of this. I really enjoy them. Uh, but anyway, thank you for tuning in and I'll see you again soon.